All right, I am out here today testing my rotary phase converter, which when it's done will be a pretty fancy thing. Right now it looks like a total shock arc flash hazard. Um, we're dealing with some relatively high voltages here, so you probably shouldn't do stuff like this unless you have everything nicely set up and know what you're doing. So this is probably just all around a bad idea, but I acknowledge that. Don't <laughs> lecture me on this being kind of sketchy right now. It's just a temporary setup. So what is a rotary phase converter? I don't want to get into a ton of detail on it, but very basically it takes single phase power because in the US we only have single phase and it makes three phase power. And three phase power, um, you get two extra live wires and it um, has a sense of rotation. So it's really good for running motors and most big motors like here's just a little really crappy motor in terrible shape but it's um it's a three phase two horsepower motor and it doesn't it runs super efficient on three phase because there is a sense of rotation i don't want to get into all the details you either know what three phase is if, or you don't if you don't know all about three phase and stuff you can look some up on your own but to get three phase um you have to have, you have to generate that phase. And that's what this giant motor does. This is a 20 horsepower, come on, focus. It's a 20 horsepower um, three phase motor. And basically what all of this stuff does is it starts the motor, this motor on single phase. And then once it's started, it will continue running. And the unused phase then, because this, these have, there are three wires in this motor, well, there's more than three, but in essence, it's three. One, live one, live two, live three. We only have live one and live two hooked up. And so once it's running, live three actually generates the third phase because the motor acts like a generator then. So um, all of this stuff in here, um, this is the main contactor um, that is controlled by this switch on the front. Um, those are some fuses in there. That little contactor connects the run capacitors. The start capacitors get the motor turning, which they're in here. Although they have a tendency to explode if they're connected for more than a couple half seconds. Um, so once the motor's spinning, the inertia of the motor spinning will keep it spinning. Then we connect the run capacitors to make it run better and also even out the voltages. Because the voltages coming out of the motor, it should be 240 everywhere, but it's going to be more like 215, 240, 240, and these capacitors even that add it all out, so it's all 240. Um, so yeah, those are the fuse blocks. Um, three of those fuses are for the run capacitors. The other three are for control voltages. Those are like little two amp fuses. There's a 24 volt power supply for the switching relays. There's a time delay relay that controls how long the start capacitors are connected. And those are just two relay switches. I don't really remember what they do. <laughs> down here behind all these pile of capacitors, which will not be in here in the final product. Um, that capacitor is the input capacitor that gives power to the idler motor. That's what this is called because this motor um, doesn't have anything hooked up to the shaft. Focus, please. Yeah. The shaft never has anything hooked up. It just idles. Um, and the load that the mechanical load on the motor is internal just from drawing power from that generated phase. You're putting the motor under a load. So that's why it's called an idler. But this, um, contactor there gives power to the idler motor and this contactor here is the output so um when you press this button and um, when the it only works when the thing's running but when you press this button it will um connect whatever the output is to your ge newly generated three phase power so in this case the output is this awesome transformer i have a thing for transformers i don't know why but and um, this here steps up 240 volts to 480 volts. So I can really run anything, but some bigger equipment only works on 480, 460, those voltages. Um, and the only way to really get that is to step up the voltage. So we got um, our 243 phase in and we get our 483 phase out. And this is super dangerous when you're dealing with 480, you should not have something like this, but um, I will turn this on and that will power this motor off of 480, just like that. And 
there's the data for that transformer if you're interested. It's a um, it's a center tapped delta on the for the secondary side, which is the primary side for me, the 240 volt side, and it's a corner tapped delta or a corner grounded. I mean, not tapped, and probably center grounded deltas. If I said tapped before, but it's a corner grounded delta on the 480 volt coil. But there it is. It's huge. It's 30 kVA, which is um, actually bigger than the pole transformer powering my house. So yeah, but it was it was really cheap, really cheap for the size size of transformer it is. So I'm very happy with it. But let's start this thing up. So the first thing I'm going to do is hook up this current meter and set it to the max setting, and I'm going to hook it up to the power coming in. And it's set so it will hold the highest current. And that's just so we can see what the inrush current is for starting this motor, because I bet it's gonna be a lot of amps. Um, just for like a split second so it doesn't trip any breakers, but it'll probably be close to like 300 amps going on. But let's see, so here's, you're not really gonna be able to see the panel, but what's gonna happen is this light is on now, that's stopped. When the motor is started, starting and the start capacitors are connected, the yellow light will be on which is only for like a split second. And then the green light will be on once the start capacitors are disconnected and everything's fine. It's a little noisy with the first start, but here we go. So that was it. That noise, loud noise it made as it was spinning up was the start capacitors connected and now it is just running by itself. Um, the only thing that's prevents a three-phase motor from running on single phase is the lack of the sense of rotation on single phase. But once you get the motor spinning, just it's such a giant rotor on there. Once it's spinning, just the inertia of it spinning will keep it spinning in the same direction. Um, yeah. Let's see what that inrush current was. A nice and even 200 amps. I did not expect it to be that even. But yeah. That is the exact same size as my electrical service, but now that it is running, it's drawing 40, 34 amps just running, doing nothing. Which is still a lot, but it's not 200 amps, so the breaker and everything can handle that just fine. Now over here, um, the output is not connected and the run capacitors are not connected. So I press this button now, those will be connected and you might hear a difference in the motor. The motor starts sounding different when it has the run capacitors. Okay, there's, there's, you can't hear it. <laughs> it does sound a little different though. But now that white light's on, you might not be able to see that with the sunlight that that's on. Um, so, and here's another cool thing. Once you get those run capacitors connected, um, the current that the motor pulls just to spin and idle goes way down. So now instead of 34, we're pulling 20. And on the other live wire, also 20. So nice and even. We can't see these, so just take my word for it. Can't see it later. But between live one and two, which is just from the power grid, we have 245 volts. Between uh, live two and live three, which is between the power grid and my generated leg, we have 242 volts. And between live one and my generated leg, which is again power grid to generated leg, is 240. So they're really close. Um, without the run capacitors, those voltages would be way different. They're within like a couple volts. And so on the output of this transformer, I've got 467 volts, 462 volts, and 457 volts. Not perfect but good enough to run a motor. And to prove it, we have a three-phase motor right here on the ground. And with the flip of this switch, it runs. So now I can run three-phase equipment in my garage. And the voltage does, the more load you put on it, the less accurate the voltage is, but you can see it's running. And a cute little thing here is this motor 
Oh, it's hooked up differently. But, um, yeah, if I hooked up this motor exactly the same as this motor, it would run in the same direction as this motor. Just little electricity things. But yeah, these are also super easy to reverse, unlike single phase induction motors. Just flip two of the phases around and then it will run in the opposite direction. There's just so many reasons that three phase motors are better than single phase. So yeah, that was it. I just kind of wanted to show this off. Um, and once it's actually hooked up for real, it'll be much nicer. But that's it.